Hey everyone, I've got something really fun to share with you today. It's a new 3D printer, but not just any 3D printer, it's this tiny resin 3D printer. This is the Tiny Maker that launched over on Kickstarter in the fall of 2022. I ended up backing this campaign. I ended up getting one of the early bird options, which netted me two of these resin 3D printers, plus a wash and cure station. It's not what this is exactly. This is an early production unit that they sent for me to test out and to share and see how this actually works before they start sending out the full production orders. Now, once I actually receive mine, I'll do a full on review, but I figure we'll just do that exactly here today. We'll get this unboxed, run a few prints and see how well this thing works. But just look how tiny and cute the packaging is for this little 3D printer. Comes on this little plastic pallet here. I, I checked, it's not 3D printed. And just take a look at the size comparison between this and a standard bottle of resin. It's so tiny. I almost don't wanna ruin the packaging here because of how cute this is, but let's cut this off and see what's inside the packaging here and how well everything shipped in transit for this. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Just popped right out. That is adorable. Oh my goodness. I mean, that's it. It's look at this. It's all in one unit. It looks like it's almost ready to go once I get it out of the plastic packaging here. But yeah, it's all clear so you can see completely through it as well. The only other thing inside the packaging is a USB type A to USB type C cable. I just can't get over how small this is and I'm loving the clear design of it so that you can actually see directly inside this. I wish more resin 3D printers were just like this. So we have the printer itself. There's the acrylic top, cute little acrylic top and we've got the build plate here that's gonna be secured in place for transit so I can remove the tape and or attempt to remove the tape. Look how tiny that is. <laughs> it's so small. Obviously you're not gonna be able to fit big things on this. Here's the little screws that are gonna help hold the vat in place. And it actually looks like there is a vat cover here, which is interesting. I was not expecting it to come with a little vat cover, but that makes sense for transporting this around, if you have resin in here, you don't want it spilling, but that's, there's the, there's the vat and the FEP sheet that's on there. Also, it's got a little max fill line as well, just like you have on other resin 3D printers. On the side, we've got a micro USB port, and then on the back is where we're gonna power the actual unit with the USB-C port. What's pretty cool is that there's actually a screen that you can see the different controls for the printer. This does come pre-leveled, or so it's said here on the screen, so I'm not gonna go through the leveling process. We're just gonna start up a print and see how everything goes. And before we can take a look at some of the prints that I've gotten off of the Tiny Maker, let me give you some of the details about this machine. It is obviously extremely small. It's about 100 by 115 by 150 millimeters in its overall size for the machine. It weighs slightly over one pound and it has a build volume of 30.6 by 40.8 by 60 millimeters. But it's actually gonna end up being about 54 millimeters because I, what I found out is if you try to print with that full build volume of 60 millimeters, it'll actually warn you there on the touch screen that it's too tall. Because I believe what will end up happening is the print will end up getting stuck in the vat with no way to get the print free. And when it comes to actually slicing your own files, you can use Chi2Box or Prusa Slicer, and you're gonna end up creating a series of PNG images that this printer will use to actually print the file. What's also really interesting about this is that your sliced files are actually all managed directly on the printer itself. So you can control whether or not it's printing at the 0.05 millimeter layer height or the 0.1 millimeter layer height. Those are the two layer height options. And then you have a bunch of different control options directly on the screen of the printer. Two other call-outs that I wanted to make about this is one, it's incredibly quiet compared to basically any other 3D printer. This essentially doesn't make almost any noise whatsoever. I can't hear it at all from the other room. I've had to double check it multiple times to make sure it was actually printing. The other is that it prints 
really slow. This is not a mono screen resin 3D printer that can print with really high print speeds. You're also not going to get really fine details with this 3D printer because of its limited screen resolution that it's working with, which is 240 by 320. And as far as I've seen online, there's not really any swappable screen option for this as of now, but in the future, maybe that's something that's going to be available. Now, my printer did come with a handful of pre-sliced files, so I tried printing this hammer dwarf and it just did not turn out very good. Uh, one, you know, one half of it turned out pretty clean, but the back half where the hammer was just did not look well. And I ended up using some rapid resin. And when I reached out to the tiny maker team there, they mentioned I should try and use something from any cubic, some of their standard resin, which is what I ended up switching to. And I'm seeing better results with this. So I reprinted it using the default settings, which were at 0.1 layer height. So it's a little chunky but it still looks pretty clean. However, it still did not print entirely properly there in the back. So again, I've reached back out to the Tiny Maker team and they think that there might be an issue with the screen on my machine. So they're gonna send me out a new screen to test out along with this. It's all part of the testing process, but I figured I'd share the results that I'm getting with you all. So I wanted to see what it looks like at 0.05 layer height. So again, without having to reslice anything, you just go in directly to the printer, modify the setting on screen and hit reprint. This took about five hours to print. So it's definitely slow for something small, but it's definitely the best of the three that I printed. I then tried some of this yellow resin from Anycubic and I tried printing the teeth files that came pre-sliced at 0.05 layer height. And these turned out pretty flawlessly. I think these are easily the best set of prints that I've seen so far off of this machine. Everything, the details are really smooth. Again, not the crispest looking 3D prints that I've seen off of a resin 3D printer, but for the price point and the size of this, it's pretty impressive. And then I wanted to try printing something a little bit more complicated and slicing my own file by Teco Toys. This is a action figure. This is actually a 3D printable action figure in this little peg format here that's pre-supported and I loaded it up into the slicer and Chitu box. I ended up scaling it down to I think about 70% of the original file size and slicing it and printing it here. And the results I think are pretty good for this. There are some issues where I think it's just slightly overexposed as well as just some excess film that's showing up on there, but it might all be due to the actual screen. I haven't played around with the actual settings for this and really dialing in any resin settings. I'll definitely be doing that for my full review once I get my hands on this 3D printer. I think the one thing that I didn't mention is the actual price point for this. If you're interested in picking up one of these, it's still up over on Indiegogo. And I believe the price point is at $120 for the machine currently that's listed over on Indiegogo. This is a really cool miniature resin 3D printer. Obviously, you're probably better off if you're really into resin 3D printing on getting something like uh, something from Elegoo or any cubic. But this is gonna be something that if you're already into resin 3D printing and you're wanting to just bring something to a show or show off at an event, this could be a really fun little resin resin 3D printer to have on hand to travel along with you. I'm also really looking forward to getting my hands on their wash and cure unit that should be coming with my Kickstarter backed order as well. Again, if you're interested in more information on this, I'll have links to it down below. Uh, this was a really fun one to play around with and I'm looking forward to swapping out the screen. I'll be providing some more updates when I get that, but definitely stay tuned in the future because I'll be doing a full review once I get my hands on the fully backed unit that I backed on Kickstarter. Oh, and I also want to say a big thank you to all my patrons. Patreon supporters for your continued support of me making content here on the interwebs. If you're interested in things like my resin 3D printer settings, you can find those over on my Patreon. But let me know what you think about this tiny resin 3D printer. You'll definitely be seeing more from me on this here very soon. Hey, thanks again for watching you all, and I'll see you next time.